Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect, my name is Pete and today we complete both the UNC Hostage and the UNC Distress Call assignments. Those two assignments are pretty straightforward and can be easily completed. With a bit of planning and strategy they are not too hard even on insanity difficulty and especially the UNC Hostage assignment has a nice reward in the form of some morality points. So let's get into it, we will leave Xavin, the Strenuous System and the Horse at Nebula and we will travel to the Hades Gamma Cluster. Here we have the Antaeus system, which I wanted to visit in this episode originally, but then decided against it, because we also have the Farinata system and that's where we're going next. Inside the system we can do the usual planet scanning, some thorium here, a rocky asteroid with some magnesium over there, another Perothean data disk to further fill the collection, and then the MSV Ontario. The UNC hostage mission will play out on this ship and we acquired that mission very early in the game in one of the Citadel elevators. The report actually specifically stated that we would be facing fanatical biotics, so let's bring some of our own and take Liara and Caden with us. And here we are, now on board of the MSV Ontario. The first thing we can do is loot the crate over to the right here. That gives us a Banshee assault rifle, not too useful but we'll take it. On the minimap you might already be able to see a few red dots, so let's pull the gun, then open the door, turn to the right and move in. We will open the door here and then fire a shot into the room that will not only trigger the bionic enemies but also a 3 minute countdown. That is the time until the hostage gets executed but even on insanity that limit is pretty generous. However, only if we play our cards right. And that is the main reason why we brought two biotics along. A huge factor in winning this fight is to keep these guys immobilized at all times. There are only 6 biotic enemies here but they all have the ability to knock us down and they will definitely do so if given the chance. So you can see my main strategy is to keep them occupied with lift, throw or singularity because they are really only good at one thing and that is offense. They do have a few bars of shields but once those are down they're pretty much cannon fodder and as you can see we're able to dispatch of them pretty quickly. And using the entrance here as kind of a choke point also helps tremendously. Now only one guy remains in the main area. So let's move in, here he is, hit him with throw and then we can take him out. And that is the entire situation dealt with in roughly one minute. Now we could use the remaining two to loot the place, but I think let's get to the hostage first. See how it is? You write letters and everyone ignores you. Force is the only thing people appreciate. So how about if I kill Chairman Burns and finish the charade? Please, I was trying to help you people! Now, there are two ways this conversation can go. We could either choose the violent option to earn some XP or the peaceful solution for morality points. Since experience points are abundant and morality points a bit harder to come by, let's try and calm the situation. Let's not do anything we're all going to regret. Why not? What have we got to lose? Since the chairman here decided that we didn't get reparations, we've got nothing left to live for. But I've changed my mind. Seeing you all, it's, it's clear that you all deserve... You had your chance. Some L2s are nearly crippled from side effects of the implants, but you voted against reparations. Both morality options here lead to the same peaceful solution of the quest, and since we still lag behind in Renegade points a bit, we'll go with the Intimidate option. If you die fighting, you'll get a lot of biotics killed as well. What do you mean? Well, I mean you're not exactly helping your cause. If people think that all L2 biotics are violent extremists, what is that going to accomplish? But people need to hear about what the government has done and what it has failed to do. People have heard. You've already accomplished that. You don't need to die for it. You're right. I don't want to die. Maybe something will happen this time. We surrender. Thank you, Commander. I thought I was dead when they took me. I'll see to it that the reparations discussion is reopened. I didn't know they were so desperate. Alright, that seems like an agreeable solution. A fifth fleet cruiser will be by shortly to pick you and the prisoners up. And here we are, quest solved and 9 renegade points earned. This leaves us only with the job to loot the place and we can start with the secure storage locker over here. 
Once again, some weaponry, I won't go into the details here, but I promise I will do an equipment overview soon. Then there is one more container in the cockpit of the ship, that is out of the door here and then in the corridor to the left, through the door at the end, and then the secure crate is on the floor on the left. One more time, three weapons, and we can head into the only room we haven't searched yet. In what looks to be the crew quarters, we have a malfunctioning object right behind the door, and for a change this one holds a grenade upgrade. The fusion explosive isn't too interesting though, mainly because toxic damage is a rather slow way of killing, and on insanity difficulty it's a good idea to be fast. Now we have returned to the main room where the battle took place, because here we have another crate hidden, and this one can actually be a bit easy to miss, because chances are if you don't specifically look for it, you'll never pass by here. That is, unless combat brings you here, and in that case you should have a few more pressing issues. Once again, to no one's surprise, a few guns in here. And speaking of loot that is well hidden and easy to miss, I actually just remembered that I forgot one crate in the room with the hostage. Surprise, surprise, more guns. But our duty here is done, we can return to the exit and then leave to the Normandy. Welcome back on board and let's activate the galaxy map for a message from Admiral Hackett. Message coming in. Patching it through. Thank you for dealing with the hostage situation, Commander. Chairman Burns was quite impressed by the way you resolved the situation peacefully. Your assistance above and beyond the formal duties has been noted, Commander. Fifth Fleet out. Well, isn't it nice to hear that. Now, by completing this mission, we can check off the Farinata system. We have done everything we can here. Now, that still leaves three systems in the Hades Gamma Cluster, but we will save those for a later day. Our next target, the UNC Distress Call assignment, lies a bit further away in the Argus Row Cluster. And in here, we will want to travel to the Hydra system. Once again, the usual survey round through the system, we can find some Helium-3 on Cyber and a Turian Insignia on Canrum. And that's already it, up next is Medgos. Message coming in. Patching it through. The general distress call from the Sacred Angel Medical Transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. An emergency landing. Argos. Communications failing. Life support and emergency transponder won't last. Please hurry. Now, what you just heard is one way of picking up the assignment. The other one is hacking a terminal in Ambassador Eudina's office way back on the Citadel. And we also did that. For this mission, we will barely do any fighting on foot. Some electronic skills are required though. So let's go with Garrus and Tali. Should we land outside the Mako for some reason, that is probably the team that will have it easiest. For both Garrus and Tali we have level up points to spend, two with Garrus and those will both go in sniper rifles unlocking the first rank of assassination, and then one with Tali and that will join the one that she already has in basic armor. Then we can also quickly hop into the equipment menu. Here we can switch Shepard to tungsten rounds against synthetic enemies, then remove all upgrades from Garrus' assault rifle and put them onto his sniper rifle. With assassination unlocked, that is what he will use from here on out. We will also switch his armor from the Titan IV to the Predator VI. That one has a bit less damage protection but far more shields. Tali's pistol gets upgraded from Raikou 5 to 7, and with three upgrade slots to fill on that, we will give her a combat scanner, improved sights, and also tungsten than rounds. Now we are well prepared for what lies ahead and we can mark the first target on the minimap. We will go in a nice counterclockwise circle that will bring us to three points of interest and then finally to the quest location. The quest itself is pretty straightforward and easily described. The computer console that we hacked in Udina's office had an alliance report on it and that one spoke of unusual energy readings in the Argus Row Cluster. When we arrived here we heard a distress call from a downed medical ship and that's what we're going to investigate in a few minutes. For now we have arrived next to a Turian wreckage, fully equipped with a corpse of course, and we can recover a Turian insignia from here. Then we can go back to the Mako, set the map marker on the debris to the west and get moving. 
And while we're on our way here, let's actually quickly talk about options for the next few episodes. Now, what I was thinking is, the Argus Rogue Cluster is also home to the Phoenix system. In that system, we could not only complete the assignment for Rex, but also the entirety of the Pinnacle Station DLC. Now, I know that this would put us even further away from the main quest line, and I'm not quite sure if I want to do that, especially since fully completing Pinnacle Station is actually a pain in the ass. Also, we might simply not be at a high enough level yet, at least not to beat them on insanity difficulty. But I have to admit I don't have too much experience with Pinnacle Station on insanity, so if you have actually completed the DLC on that difficulty then let me know in the comments below what you think, otherwise we will probably do something else entirely. And now after a bit of a bumpy ride we have reached our next target, a crashed probe and this is the one that required electronics to salvage and doing so gives us some more tungsten rounds and a high explosive 7 grenade upgrade. I uh, will put that one on the grenade launcher as soon as we return to the Normandy. For now we have one more location to visit before we start the quest and that one is not marked on the map but it is to the southwest here. So let's get going again and this time we can just speed things up until we get there. Alright, here we are, exiting the Mako next to a Mercury deposit. Surveying that gives us, of course, some Mercury. And now it is time for the final ride that will bring us to our quest location. As you might have been able to guess, we will have a small fight soon. And simply going from the fact that some unusual energy readings were detected on this planet, I think it is pretty obvious who we're going to face. If that was not enough, then going with an entirely tech-based squad and equipping them all with tungsten rounds should tell you a bit more. To spoil the surprise, we're going to shoot a few Geth. Looks like the signal's coming from that wreckage. Okay, first things first, of course we want to get all kills on foot. But that would however require us to leave the Mako and in the middle of two Geth armatures, some rocket troopers and also some drones, that's not a good idea. So let's actually keep driving and drive a rather large circle around the Geth. That serves mainly one purpose. Both the armatures and also the rocket troopers are incredibly slow, much slower at least than the Mako. The rocket drones, however, can not only make a straight beeline for us, but they are also probably the most annoying enemies in this fight. So by driving away from the Geth, we can pretty much separate the drones from the rest. And then we can use that to chip away at their health with the Mako's machine gun. And using the machine gun here is key because the main gun would be an instant kill and we of course don't want that. Once we have them at low health, we can exit and want to immediately use a double round of overload. That will kill one drone right away and removes the shields of the other, and our assault rifle does the rest. Now we have two Geth armatures and three rocket troopers left, I believe, nicely divided into two groups, and we can focus on the group that is closer, which is conveniently also the one with only one rocket trooper. Our main target is to take the rocket trooper down, but not out, we will do that on foot, while at the same time evading the projectiles from the Geth armature. The rocket trooper itself will constantly be knocked down from the machine gun fire, so we don't have to worry much about him. Anytime you have his shields down is probably suitable to go for the kill, but just to be sure I chip them down to the absolute minimum, because that will allow us to step out, get the kill and hop back into the Mako in just a matter of seconds. Now we can focus on the armature and that is pretty straightforward, you know the drill. A healthy combination of a main cannon, machine gun and rocking back and forth, all of that until we have the armature at low health. Alright, that should probably be enough. And here is the kill and also a level up. We will get to that once the fight is over, for now we have one more group of enemies to deal with. Conveniently enough for us, one lone rocket trooper has advanced up the hill here, and so we don't even need to use the Mako to take him out. A nice round of overload, a few well placed shots and he's dealt with. That leaves the armature and one more rocket trooper, and from the fight before we know that should be a walk in the park. This time we actually focus on the armature first, basically just because the first shot on it was a hit and I don't want the shields to go back up. Um, this could take a few moments. And here we are, ready to grab the kill. Wonderful, now that only leaves the poor rocket trooper, who actually gets a hit on us here, I think that calls for an answer. For him, we don't even need to use the Mako, we can immediately step outside, use overload and sabotage, and that deals with him pretty quickly. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the UNC distress call assignment taken care of. Now, apart from returning to the Normandy, only two things remain. Number one, let's drive over to this rock formation over here, survey that and grab ourselves some thorium. Then use the talent points we just earned from leveling up and spend Shepard's 2 on fitness. That will boost his health to almost 500, making him able to withstand quite a punishment. For Garrus, we will continue in the sniper rifle tree, the sooner we have that maxed out the better, and with Tali we will grab the first defensive ability in shield boost. And now we can quickly hop back into the Mako and return to the Normandy. We're back on board and that's it for today's episode. We have completed two systems and two assignments today. Once again, let me know what you would like to see in the next episode. Until then, leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and I can say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.